coming uh, 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 that, that we're having. So as such, to ignore lived experiences of hip hop and today's student is to ignore the modes and means toward the subjective truths that guide the normative behavior of their worldview. And so that's why the shadow boxing piece was an interesting kind of uh, discussion because we find among young people across America, we find that they are they are wrestling with some in the classroom. They are they are wrestling with some some entity trying to navigate through this this space called learning. Oftentimes it's structural, right? Economic inequalities and social economic disparities. But oftentimes it's psychic, right? Oftentimes it's seriously the understanding of how can I rise above a particular circumstance that I've either been placed in or, or, or that I find myself in, in quest of someone who has knowledge. And so when you talk about KRS-One, as our teacher, if you will, the students that come to my class, I mean, they, they appreciate KRS-One when they hear them, but the students that come to my class are listening to Wiz Khalifa. You see what I'm saying? I mean, they're they're listening at a certain level to Kid Cudi, and they and they want to come to the classroom with a, a Gorilla Zo analysis. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and, and so I'm sitting up here trying to figure out how do I find that analytical space within the language that they use, within the that they're trying to figure out how uh, um, 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 how to navigate through that space. And so I begin my classes oftentimes asking the question, what are you listening to today? Mm -hmm. Right now, just right now. Because when we walk on campuses at predominantly black universities, white universities, anyway, the iPods are blaring, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. so, so, so they step into my uh, philosophy class, or they step into your music class, they step into your history class, <laughs> already inculcated by something, mm -hmm. right? So, so, so one of my initial conversations, what are you listening to right now? Oh, Doc, man, you ain't hip to what I got in my eyes. <laughs> I said, I might not be, but just, you know, tip me with it. And so oftentimes, they, you know, I just randomly throw something out there, and, and, and immediately I navigate to a philosophical discussion, right? Why do I do that? In part because I give importance and credence to what they have in their arsenal. Right? Yeah. What do they come to the philosophical table with? Let me give you credence there. Let me take you somewhere. But let me start with where uh, you are at that moment. This is important at a time when the world is looking at educational issues in the black community specifically, but in poor communities where everybody's waiting on Superman and trying to get the lottery bottle, you know, ball to get access to education. And every time we wait for Superman, I'm, 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 I'm all my philosophical heads in the room, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of a Samuel Beckett discussion, right? Mm -hmm. all right? And so as our young people across America are waiting on Superman, Samuel Beckett said we're waiting on Godot, right? Waiting on some type right. of, of entity to uh, uh, create meaning in a meaningless experience. And so your conversation about the pimps and holes, right? I tell the students all the time, let's read some Samuel Beckett for a minute and watch the holes in the pimps in, in this conversation, right? And they said, well, Doc, there's some holes in pimps and Samuel Beckett. And so here we go now, taking them through a conversation, right? That, it, that they would normally have through Samuel Beckett. So now I can take you through Beckett, I can take you through Camus, mm -hmm. your conversation about shadow boxing, right? What, what are we fighting, right? Mm -hmm. well, well, there's a sense to which it's an absurd existence that they live in, right? Mm -hmm. So when uh, a, a gorilla is always saying, you know, I'm, 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 I'm alone in this world looking for a way and don't know which way to go, right? Mm -hmm. I'm looking for the wise men, but all the wise men are walking in temper. Right? So, so this is an analysis of the individuals in which they come to for knowledge, and and, 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 and them and their um, the, them and their phenomenological experiences, and the people they're coming to for knowledge don't know where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. So you say, well, Doc, do you feel me? I said, well, let's let's break that down a little bit. How can I feel you? Do you understand where I come mm -hmm. from? So, so that's the one thing I say. We in philosophy, when we do it right, what we should do is understand that we. That, that there are lenses that we use. And then as in, in, in part two, there are analysis that we can take them through with their lived experiences, right? So, so second, that, 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 that this paper is not so radical of a pedagogy, right? And, and, and as we talk, it's not a radical pedagogy. You know, I mean, you know, we want to use the language. And, you know, Paula Freire, we love the brother. We love, you know, what he does. But the, the, the reality is this is not radical. But when you ask the brothers and the sisters in the hood, when you ask the sisters and the brothers in, in the suburbs, they have an analysis, right? It's not radical, right? You know, so what is radical when Jay-Z, for instance, this is the book, you know, 
Hey, 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 shameless plug here. Here's the book real quick. <laughs> on, the back of, on the back of it, you got the information here. You can adopt it your classes. It's a teaching tool. We'll be talking about it later. But anyway, shameless. Go shameless. It's a radical pedagogy. It's not a radical pedagogy. So, 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 so I assert for us educators to. Uh, uh, take students where we want them to go intellectually. We need to look at what they do at the point of the depth or even lack thereof of the experiences. I mean, when they come to the uh, classroom with waka waka, it's a party, right? I mean, there's nothing deep about that conversation, right? But there's a sense to which, let me try to figure out what the hell is going on, right? So then when waka waka, you know, when you're quoting waka waka and he says, well, uh, uh, two years ago I was broke and now I'm a millionaire, right? So now I say, well, students, okay, what type of analysis are you using toward, you know, toward that medium? They say, well, what well, you get involved in hip hop or basketball? So now it becomes a sociological conversation about are these the roots toward football, I mean, you know, I mean, toward excellence or success in rap music, right? So now it becomes a conversation we can have in the classroom collective, even though we're breaking down some bullshit liter the lyrics of Waka Waka, right? And, 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 and all I mean, all my, I mean, all, all, all respect due to all my brick squads. <laughs> But, but so we have to understand that, that their every moment is a teaching moment, right? Every opportunity with these students, because they're learning something, even if it's bullshit. They're learning, they, something is processing. And so now, we, we in philosophy, when, when we do it in our best, we're trying to sort of, you know, uh, 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 create some sense of strength with that. So when we're talking about metaphysics, right? So, so you know, you, you know, I always tell students, you know, we can look to KRS one all day, or we can look to you know, the five percenters as you talked about earlier, or we can look to all the Wu Tang and all that kind of stuff. I said I like to use Arrested Development, talking about Tennessee, right? Mm -hmm. so, I mean, you know, how do you find a sense of home or solace? Right? I was at. Sister Jamie's conversation earlier, and there was a, a, a conversation about uh, this black uh, black people search for home, right? Home, a home as a place, both physically, home as a place metaphysically, right? So this idea of home in a homeless type of environment is a philosophical conversation. So metaphysics is there. Axiology, right? Axiology is a moral construct. How does one seek? Uh, uh, how does one gain access to ethics and morality, right? I and mean, that, 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 that's rock in hip hop, right? What is the good and what is the bad? How do you determine what is right or what is wrong, right? In, 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 in what type of context do we use a normative language or, or subjective language to de, uh, um, um, determine right or wrong? So clearly we'll have to get involved in gender discussions mm -hmm. and sexual inequalities. And, uh, and homophobia and all these things as ethical principles. But at the same time, my students want to come up with a Nietzschean analysis and say, hold on, who the hell is going, how are you going to tell me what's right or wrong? Mm -hmm. so, so then now they turn to Frederick Nietzsche. Mm -hmm. So I say, well, let me tell you a little bit about Fred. Right? <laughs> so now again, as a philosopher, I use these moments. So if you're going to use the analysis of these people that we try to do in philosophy, let me now use the way in which you interpret the world through the lens of these philosophers, and this is what Nietzsche saw. About. So how do you own, own your life, right? This idea of liberation that you're talking about, right? I mean, I mean clearly, hip hop has a liberatory background in terms of you know, a freedom from, right? But, but, but what the existentialists talk about is freedom too, right? What do I have the ability in my particular circumstance, what do I have the ability to accomplish? How can my language, how can my dance, how can my move, how can my swag, how can all that create a sense to which it is agency, it is activity, it is, it is subjectivity, it is me asserting who I am in this, in this context, it is me becoming in an ontological sense, right? So I mean, this is what we do in philosophy, right? And I'm just doing it. I'm not a hip hop head, I'm a philosopher, but I try to use, as James Brown said, what I got to get, what I want. <laughs> and so, uh, 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 um, this third piece, right? Uh, uh, so this next section is entitled Socratic Sensibilities and the Making of a Hip Hop Philosopher. Cornell West, in my Harvard experience, you know, you know, though you're in the room with Nomi, in 1995, I went to, I left Howard, I went to, uh, 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 to uh, go to, uh, Harvard for graduate school, and um, <laughs> uh, you, uh, you talked about <laughs> Trisha Rose, and Trisha was doing her postdoc. It was just, it was just a beautiful time. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, Trisha was doing her postdoc on the same hall as Cornell was on, 
and I met a brother named John Caramonica. Those of you who are hip hop fans may know John Caramonica's name. John Caramonica was kind of hanging around Cornell trying to get access a little bit, and we were talking a lot. John Caramonica and myself and Trisha Rose and a few other people in 1995 created what we understand, and then, you know, the Hip Hop Archive talked about it at Harvard, but created what we understand is the first official hip hop class, right? Now, it, it may have been different, you know, as we, you know, we all want to assert who was the godfather, the godmother, the birth, right? But you know, we sat down creating this, this sort of syllabus. So here I am nowadays thinking about those times when I was 22 years old, breaking down how do you teach a hip hop course at an Ivy League institution with any type of credibility at a time in which you know this was an important conversation. Why do I mean you know why did I mention that? In part because my years there with Cornell uh, in Afro American Studies at Harvard taught me about democracy. That's the piece you left that you left off. And how do we look at uh, uh, the hip hop community as a democratic space? How do we look at the classroom? as a democratic space. Recognize that I come to the classroom not as your professor, not as your instructor, but as your facilitator. How do I create a, a level of conversation and consciousness, right? I mean, there's a sense in which I can tell you everything I got to tell you. That don't mean I know nothing, right? I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm of a Socratic tradition. I realize that I really don't know, right? But I can tell you a whole bunch of bullshit if, if that's what you want, right? And, and the reality is, that, but how can you craft your own bullshit? Right? How can you do it in such a way that makes you a, 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 a sort of, you know, marketable in the world? And, and, and so that's why I say that because I learned early on that, as, as I say here, that there's a sense to which that a democracy or understanding that education as a democratic experience, the voice of the people of, 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 of who come to the context with their particular voices, they have a democratic strain to give, and we need to pay particular attention to that. So in the next two minutes, as I try to close, we can have some conversation. I, I, I really do. There are a couple quotes that I wanted to kind of give off, uh, uh, just in case you don't. I mean, you're not everybody. Here, you know, we will pick up the uh, journal that, that's coming out in a couple of uh, weeks, and we're all in that journal. Please pick that up. Uh, but, but there's a couple quotes that I want to give you um, um, directly. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, I didn't like to read because I stuttered. And you know, all the kids in school are like, don't let Julius read. Because you know, it take him 20 minutes to read one day. <laughs> but he uh, taught me, no, I'm sorry. But um, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, I'm like mystical, yeah! <laughs> so, I'm, I'm gonna quote here, it said, if no, if no child is to be left behind, then we should look and dissect where educational systems have failed. Uh, 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 and hip hop has reached the masses of young global citizens. Even in third world countries where poverty is rampant and educational books are minimal, hip hop speaks. On one level, hip hop plays into a capitalist mindset of the, of the, um, um, of the ideation of product, as you talked about before, uh, 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 investors and creating markets for this product. We understand that. Where the voices of educators have failed to reach many students, though, is the voices of, 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 of autodidactic hip hop genius fill the void. So the difference is that hip hop does not claim to be objective possessors of truth. Hip hop serves as peer and mentors to those communities of folk exercising their subjective sense of their human condition. And so when Grandmaster Flash wonders, like a jungle sometimes it makes me wonder how it keeps from going under. This is a subjective conversation. I'm not trying to speak for you in your context wherever you are. I'm speaking of a, a, a subjective idea of truth that I want us to be engaged in. And lastly, this is this is a question uh, 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 that I really want to get in, get, get, get in the dialogue. But what I've been teaching over the past, I guess now, like I mean, I'm 38, but it's not like I'm teaching forever. But uh, 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 since I've been teaching now since 1995, various aspects of hip hop, you know, uh, uh, culture. I've taught culture itself. I've taught literature of hip hop. I've taught philosophy of hip hop. I've taught, you know, uh, I've I, I been taught for four, you know, for a year and a half, uh, reflections of thug life in America. That was, that was, and you, you, you just imagine all the cute white kids taking that class. Um, so, it, 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 you know, I mean, they've always been fun, fun conversations. But, but the reality here is this, guys, and I want us to get, in, in, engage in conversation here, is that, and I quote here something that, 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 that Malcolm X used to say. Um, I, I say here that Malcolm X was fond of saying, I, am, I pray that God will bless you in everything that you do. I pray that you will grow intellectually so that you will understand the problems of the world and where you fit into that world picture. That's existentialism 101. I pray that all fear is evident in your heart and will take it and, and, and be taken out. 
when, when, when we juxtapose Malcolm X's quotation with Plato, again, sorry, I'm a philosopher, right? With Plato's quotation in line 225B of Republic, where Plato says, we learn to rise up out of the becoming and grasp being, if ever they are to become rational. To move from the irrational to the rational requires the graduation, like Kanye West, requires the graduation from abject fears about the world to a courage to be. Malcolm speaks of the experiences, I'm sorry, Malcolm speaks to the need to examine one's fears about the self. Our memories of experiences are like gravity, which keeps us grounded in our experiences of the world where they can limit our sense of being because we are bound to a myopic experience. But hip hop doesn't let misery have the last word. Mm. We have seen how much of rap music and hip hop culture is and how easily can be understood as a contemporary expression of an African American philosophy. The, this parallel, the parallel between Malcolm and Plato also serves as a demonstration of the commonalities of being human, no matter the cultural, historical, or political differences. And so for those of you who, who wonder about philosophy and afraid of philosophy classes, go hit a philosophy class. Go take hip hop with you and, and, and recognize that, that truth is not ultimate. Truth, truth is subjective and truth has a certain sense to which it is fluid and, uh, 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 and growing. And if, if your professors change that, or at least uh, 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 resist that particular analysis, then you just, you know, tell them to holler at your boy. Before we get to the question and answer, I want to make an important announcement, but I have a question. And I only want to see your hands. How many uh, people in the 